ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وياكم ومحدثات الامور فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد beloved brothers and beloved sisters from the deepest of my heart assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ahlan wa sahlan bikum uhibbukum fi llah hayyakum allah i love you all for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i pray to allah that may allah give me the wisdom the hikmah the sincerity to send out the message in the way which pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most wa ma kan wa ma kuntu fihi muwaffaqan wa ma akunu fihi muwaffaqan fa tawfiqun min allah wahdahu la sharika lah whatever i say any is within what pleases allah then it is indeed from allah only and none beside him if i do make mistakes and have shortfalls and shortcomings then it is lack of my knowledge and lack of wallahu alam whatever and it is nothing to do with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that i proceed i just have been told when i entered the masjid to highlight on an issue amongst the current affairs which is extremely important and also just about 2 hours before uh, just while we were driving i came all the way from a place which is 2 hours away from here i was told that possibly this is what you have to be talking about um i may not be talking exactly in that but definitely around it bi idnillah ta'ala and the topic is sensitive in extremely uh in whichever way you want to take but i would say important definitely and that is to do with our bilad al-sham ard al-sham the land of uh, prophets alambia which includes palestine syria lebanon and jordan and basically it's more focused right now in syria and palestine which has been ever in our heart and then compared to that so much of what is happening around the world uh let me tell you brothers and sisters i will without going too much in the political side of it but it is naturally going to look like it i will more try to say what is in the hadith related to it people will fit it wherever they feel like but the thing is not that we have to know it's before that i remind you all brothers and also sisters that what you people are thinking because of what is happening in sham people have thought about that more than 1000 years ago and people got excited 1300 years ago about i'm not joking i'm serious about it people they thought that that qiyama and whatever the hadith is being mentioned about sham is today and that's 1300 years ago not of today in their time and they applied it and those wallahi they applied it kanu khairan minni they were better than me and you they were more highly qualified than me and you and they had good knowledge and they were elite of the time than me and you and yet it is proven 1300 years ago after that is still they are wrong because it never happened the way they thought i swear by allah there are so many things if i present here you will be totally confused even including the uh, the sun rising from the west if i tell you people and share the details and certain twists in it you'll say oh i never thought it to be like this and all of these are coming with facts and that's why no one da when allah said wa ma ya'lamuha illa allah then the qiyama the doomsday when it will be the trumpet when exactly to be blown known best to allah we know wala taqum as-sa'a illa yawm al-qiyama illa yawm al-jum'ah that qiyama will start doomsday will be on friday but which friday we don't know we don't know enough it is if i give certain examples of things from which we see many sincere brothers they get misguided and though they 
pray five times. They would be better than me and you possibly. They pray five times plus they read Quran and Quran and Quran. They are always in the masjid and then somehow they get misguided in year 1400. <coughs> That's 1979. Possibly maybe only 20 or 30 percent of this population here today would be living at that time and we were born. That's about 36 years ago. I still remember when I was um, a primary school kid at that time. Um, and when those who thought that they are Mahdi, that's Juhayman, and they went and captured Makkah in the time of Hajj. Do you think that those brothers who followed him they were drugish, they smokeish in the pubs and doing zina and listening to me. No! They were exactly what I said a few minutes ago. Wallahi, that is what they were. Sincere brothers. Some of them, they were students in Jamia Islamia and Medina from where Allah blessed me to study in where. But when this man came, he thought that whatever Rasulullah said about Mahdi applies on him or whatever and others would thought and he went there and claimed to be that and we know the story. I'm not going to go in that. If you want it's all the internet in the internet go and see how many thousands of Muslims they lost their life till they had to break one of the side of the world in Safa Marwa for the army to invade in and go and capture them. Subhanal Khaliq al Azim. And he thought that he's Mahdi, al mutadhar Sincerely, those who followed, they were not there for anything else. Maybe few of them, but not every one of them. Kana yusharu alihim bil banan, meaning that they were good people. People were thinking, mashallah, what a pious person, what a pious person. And this is something only happened 36 years ago. Why I'm saying this? Just to let you know, these things and events which is happening in current affairs is nothing new. Not exactly in the same way, but it has been happening ever. We'll say how. Zubair, Abdullah ibn Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the grandson of Abu Bakr, when he was in here about 72 somewhere, when he went and seek refuge in Kaaba, and Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was attacking them. Many of these hadith which we apply today, they applied it on him. And who applied them? Sahabas, they thought this is it. That's it. And Tabi'in. And yet it's still 14, 1300 years ago, we are still here. Nothing happened. Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, the same one when he went and entered and penetrated Medina. They applied so many ahadith which Rasulullah has said on him. They said, the one which is going to come and attack Medina, this is him. And that's it. But it wasn't that. This is, you see I'm confusing you all, right? This is what I want. So that you realize that there are so many like you, millions and billions, good Muslim brothers and sisters, they are totally lost and confused. And they think they are good, doing good and maybe they are not. That is what I want to give you as a message. Forget about me, forget about you, forget about Juhayman and 36 years ago. Forget about what was made as a mistake in the time of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. Let us come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Authentic hadith I'm going to present before we go on that. And then we will see what we are responsible for and what we are not. You know, anybody doesn't know or never heard of Masih Dajjal? We all know. Masih Dajjal Adam Fitna, the greatest of the fitna sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be. Right? Masih Dajjal. In the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min azabi jahannam, wa min azabi al qabri, wa min fitna til mahya wal mamad, wa min fitna til Masih Dajjal. This dua after a salwat al Ibrahimiyah, that's uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and Allahumma barik ala Muhammad, after that dua, if there is any dua which has been more emphasized on to make, it is this dua. 
Muhaddithun, they make it wajib. This particular dua. Then you make any other dua after you want. Combined between many, but this should be the if it is only one, then this is the one. You seek refuge in so many things, including Al Masih al Dajjal. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his episodes with Saf ibn Sayyad, this Safi, a Jewish boy, born in Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the hadith is authentic, he tried twice at least, attempting to find out whether he is Masih al Dajjal. So, Sheikh, are you sure about that? Of course, it is authentically recorded. He tried to, he wanted to know whether he is he the Masih al Dajjal which Allah has warned against or someone else. He didn't know, he tried to find out, Wallahi by Allah, that is what happened. Because Allah did not give him in wahi that he is not the one. And even one, one, let us start with this, we are talking, once I put the facts, you'll say maybe he was the one. Maybe. I will give the facts. So you see, what I'm trying to tell you is confuse you, that's all. So once I confuse you, you will know that whatever you, ideologies or whatever you have thought is happening in Sham and going to happen possibly the way you thought is not the way. That is what I want to let you know, that's all. Yes, what is happening is part of the alamat to say. Nobody denies that. But is it exactly that one, the one which is going to apply the hadith which Rasulullah said? That is what I want to tell you. Is not possible. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa believed in Masih al-Dajjal. Hasha lillah la yu'min. He knew there is something like this. He is the one who told us who, he'll, who he'll, he will be. But some case coming in front of him, he had no clue about it. He tried, verified. But both attempts when he made to go and find out, his mother woke him up or he told him, uh, um, uh, told the, uh, that, look, the Prophet is com coming. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Without going, I don't want to go into details, otherwise we will complete nothing here today. But what, so he tried alayhi salatu wasalam, and he couldn't find out. Right? So if he couldn't, and the hadith is there, he could not apply it, where am I and you? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Everything happens, we read a hadith, Oh, Sheikh, is this a yes? Oh, so that is the one which is there, is this? Right? We have to be more careful than that. It may be, it may not be. Wallahi, it may be, it may not be, we don't know. It's only when the last ten ayah, the great ones will come, which will start with the one before, which is not part of the ten, and that is the appearance of Mahdi Islam, then the issues will become clear after. But before that, even when the issues of that will become clear after, there are so many things, if I tell you, you'll be confused also. Anyway, don't go to that yet. Let us start with here, before we end up in Sham, which people are so much, they don't know whom to believe, and what to say, and what to do, and what not to do. Then some of our sincere brothers, they get lost, they act irrational, they act wrongly, they, act, uh, they believe wrongly. We don't want to be part of any of those victims. Jazakumullahu khairan. Let us start with this Masih al Dajjal, which can be considered as the opener or an appetizer to some of those things. Now, Masih al Dajjal, one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith is a Muslim in many other places, he called all the people, come to the masjid. Everybody came, and then he gave a talk. He told Tamim al-Dari radiallahu ta'ala anhu what he said, he related it to the rest. Now what happened to Tamim radiallahu ta'ala anhu? When he was not a Muslim, with few about 30 other people, they went in the sea and the ship, the weather was bad, so the ship basically kept on going till it ended up in an island. Island where Allah alam, some they say it's in Sham, some they say in Iraq, uh, towards Iraq, towards Yemen, there are plenty of islands there anyway. So then they came in front of a, this big massive bed, hair, full hair everywhere. Then the bed is talking to them and saying there is a man there who wants to meet you guys. Uh, they became afraid that this is a shaitana. 
they knew, not a bed, but a shaitana, but in fact it was a bed. So they entered there, they found this man, locked like this, and you know, chained, massive man. <coughs> they said, who you are? They said, you will know about me, but from where you are, ila akhri, when they said, then he asked the questions about uh, Nahar Tabari, a big massive uh, 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 river, what about the water in it? He'll say, okay, the time will, there is a time when it will come that the water will finish. And that river is between Jordan and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, Philistine. And uh, it is in the borderline, which is part of the battle in, in many places uh, between the Yahud and others. And then the other, and then the other is uh, Nahr Baisan, uh, Nahl Baisan, and a few other things. Now, he, he, after asking these questions, he said, I am a Masih Dajjal. Wallahi, the hadith is Sahih, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. I am Masih Dajjal, a time will come. The, he asked about the Prophet and things, then I will do this, this. Okay, not going there right now. Now, this he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had, and he knew, and he said about Tamim Dari. While the other episode in Medina is happening, which is also authentic, trying to find out whether he is Masih al Dajjal. Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said, Li an ahlif ashra marrat. Annahu al Masih al Dajjal ahabu ilayya min an ahlif marra annahu laysahu. To swear by Allah that he is Masih al Dajjal ten times is more beloved to me than to say one time that he is not. Subhanallah. Abdul Umar ibn al-Khattab used to say that he is the one. He wanted to kill him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If he is the Masih al-Dajjal, you won't be able to kill him. And if he's not, then you would be doing nothing. There is nothing good in doing it. Abu Sa'id al-Qudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he died. They were going for, to Makkah. On the way everybody got down when you ascend from a trip or while on the way they started to look for the trees, for the shade, to sit there. So he sat down under a shade. This Ibn Sayyad, right, Saf Ibn Sayyad, he came and put his stuffs near Abu Sa'id. So Abu Sa'id ta'ala he said, if you take it to another place, you know it's very hot and stuffy, so don't come near to me. Abu Sa'id, he said later on, the only reason I said that because I hated to, him to be near me. Because everybody looked at him as, sure, of Masih Dajjar or his accomplice or something in Medina. They all knew about these things. But this man had become a Muslim. So how can he be Masih Dajjal? But listen, let me complete. So Abu Sa'id al-Qudri was sitting there and then they started to milk the milk and then he brought it to him. He said, no, you know, it's so hot, the milk is hot, you know, how can I drink? Abu Sa'id, he said, the only reason I didn't want to take it from his hands. That is when he started to so talk. He said, Ibn Sayyid to, to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Allah ta'ala, look, people have been talking about me, this and this and that. He's aware of it. I feel so bad, I feel like to bring a, a rope and put it on the tree and hang myself from it, meaning commit suicide. So Abu Sa'id, he said, I felt bad about him. Uh, he went tender and soft towards him. Then he said, but wallah, inni a'lamu man huwa wa ayna huwa, wa mata yakhruju kama qal. By Allah I know, this, this Ibn Sayyid is saying, that who is Masih Dajjal I know. Where he is now I know. When he's going to come or something like that I know. Then Abu Sa'id got angry, he said, ooh, what is this? Now part of the argument which Ibn Sayyid presented, he said, look, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said he will not be able to enter Makkah and Medina. And I am coming from Medina, I live in Medina and I am going to Makkah. So I can't be there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he won't have any children. And I have got children. Amongst his children were, I think, Tariq and Walid, who were among the narrators of the hadith, which is in Muslim, uh, in Muattal Imam Malik, rahimahullah. So, you see, his children were good Muslims. But then after he said this, Abu Sa'id, he had reservation on him. Now, one day in Medina, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala he was passing by Masih Dajjal. Not Masih Dajjal, astaghfirullah, I mean Ibn Sayyad. 
you get focused in it and you get carried away. But that is not the answer. Don't worry about it. Then he said to him, what happened to your eye? You know, Masih al-Dajjal, he has a defect in one eye. He can only has one eye with which he can see. How exactly will that be? We have got so many funny pictures going around that one eye in the middle has been a born child. All these funny things are coming from everywhere. So be careful of that also. So he said, what happened to your one eye? He said, I don't know. He said, it is in your face and you don't know. And then he said, if Allah wants, he will put this eye in your in your uh, in your stick, ya yeah, Abdullah no Amr. He got so angry, he beat him up and broke his stick. And he got very angry. That's uh, Ibn Sayyid. And then later on, the Sahabas were talking. And he said he uh, he even didn't know what he did to that man. That he hit him, beat him up till his stick broke. He got so angry. So Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she heard her brother, that's Abdullah no Amr, what he said, she said to him, "Don't you know?" أَنَّهُ يَخْرُجُ فِي غَضَبَةٍ يَقْضِبُهَا That he'll come out when due to some anger which will ignite him and he will, he will get those powers of a Masih Dajjal and he will come. Now, which means the Sahabas were still confused about this man who lived among them. Do you think that they did not know that Rasulullah said he won't enter Medina? Didn't they know? They weren't the ones who told us. Didn't they know that Rasulullah said he won't have children? They are the ones who told us. Right? And yet still in spite of all the information, they thought this of him. There must be a reason and there has to be an explanation. I will explain a few of those things. Now, he won't be able to enter Madinah and Makkah can easily be explained as once he becomes Masih Dajjal. Simple. No children after he becomes Masih Dajjal, not before. Then the case comes also. What was he doing there in the Thailand then? As a big man. Here he was as a small boy, first born. Some of the narrations indicate him, his mother uh, carried him in her womb for 12 months. Then he was born. When he shouted, uh, the first cry it was like a one month baby. Some narrations indicate two months. Some of the narrations are, you know, not so is strong but others are indicative of it and so forth so what about it then what was he and what was he and what is he then if it is that in 1400 years is still and there is no Masih Dajjal then what was he doing in the island and what about him definitely he was there at that time no lie about it the scholars they explain about that they say that if he is already created then he is there and the time when it comes he will come if he is not created, then Wallahu Qadir ala kulli shi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able on all, all the things. He was created there for that particular place, uh, each time, only to get the message delivered. As there, when the time will come, he will be created. Now, but about this Ibn Saf, Saf Ibn Sayyad, the more authentic narration which I recall is in Sunan Abi Da'ud. In Amr Ramadan, the, in the battle which took place, I think it was in year 62, if I'm not wrong. It's year, either year 62 or 63. Major battle took place in Medina. So many of the Sahabas and Tabi'in wrongly were killed. In that battle he had disappeared. He disappeared on that day. Nobody knows where he is. The narrations indicating he died in Medina, Salatul Janazah was offered on him. They are all feeble narrations. This narration is authentic in Sunan Nabi Daud and that he disappeared from there. Some of the historians uh, which I recall from way back, such as Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah, he records that from that incident, after so many days or something, there was a big celebration on receiving him in Iran. And we know that he will come out of Yahuza. Yahuza is a place in Asbahan. And Asbahan is the second capital of Iran. And his followers will be 60,000 soldiers of Jews. And 3 plus trillion dollars of investment of the Israel is in Iran. And too many facts and figures. Al Muhim. We can say either that Ibn Saf is not that Masih Dajjal, 
but is the jal min al tajajila uh, small the jal the main the jal has yet to come because he said Allah alayhi salam said that annahu sayuladu li abwayni yahudiyayni lam yulada lahuma mundu thalathina ama that he will come out of a Jew parent who have been trying to conceive for uh, 30 years and then this child would be born. Some of the narrations indicate that even he, this one in Medina, was born from parents who, have trying to, who were trying to conceive for 30 years. Wallahu alam biswa. Al Muhim, regardless of whether he is the one and he has gone there and yet he will appear at the time when this thing has to come, or whether he is not the one and definitely he was the one in the island, no doubt about that. Whether he was already created and somehow he will end up being there and from there he is going to appear. Or is it that he was just made there to send a message but the actual bet of him yes, has to take place. Whichever of the three variations is there and scholars have talked about any of these three possibilities. But that is not what is important here for our topic. Important is that look. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the like of Umar, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala in the rest of the Sahabas, those who have narrated something from here and those who have not. They were not able to come to a single decision. Isn't it? If there was, we would have known him. Then who am I and you to take one hadith you don't even know, whether it is authentic or not, whether if it is, then how many scholars have agreed on it and you apply it on today and everyone. Everyone you see, this hadith is on you, brother. This hadith is on you. This la'an is on you. This kufr is on you. This khawarij hadith applies on you. Yeah. Who are you? First tell me, who are you, brother? Yeah, this is the problem now affecting the ummah everywhere. Uh, I remember my time when I went to Medina, mashallah, I was just 14 years old till I graduated 19 years later. But the thing is that I hardly ever used to go in any of these kind of things. Alhamdulillah, I pray, praise Allah that there was no viva in WhatsApp that time. Otherwise, we also would have been deprived of so many things. We focused only on learning. And this is what I tell the brothers, especially the youths. Forget about this and that. Now, uh, they will say, okay, we need to know the current affairs, we need to know what is happening to the Muslims all over the world. But brother, do you want to put 90% of your effort all on that? What about the effort of reading Quran and understanding it and memorizing it? Where is the effort for that? You are reading one line of the... How many of you read one just today? Especially those who have been in WhatsApp and following all the current affairs for the uh, two hours or three, which you were awake. From here you know, it is a dalil, you know it very well that you are not doing the right thing. That current affairs, how much can you do about it? Are you the king of a country? Are you the next Bill Gates so you can buy a few bombers and send it to them? Ya he spend from your time in it ala qadri, according to your capability. If really you want that current affairs we have to know we have to make dua for them we have to understand but how much of time you need in that this is where we go wrong if three hours you spend for the sake of Allah one hour is gone in the salah one hour 59 minutes in current affairs and one minute reading Quran if you read is this what you call a Muslim this is where our problem is this is where our problem is. And uh, you know, the Sahabas such as Abdullah ibn Umar and Umar and others, narrated of them, Abdullah ibn Masur radiallahu ta'ala anhu, so many others, what they used to say? They used to learn 10 ayah. Learn it, understand it, practice it, then go to the next 10 ayah. We can't even read 10 ayah, forget about practicing it. But when it comes to fatwa, when it comes to current affairs, CNN, BBC, IBC, DFG, everything with the news and the presenter you know. Yes. And then you say, brother, can I have a fatwa on what is happening in, in, in Syria? And he is ready to give fatwa. You tell him, brother, what does Alhamdu mean? He says, brother, I am not in Arab. I can't explain it to you. Sorry, I, I just know how. 
Then who gave you the right to give the fatwa? Because it is from the alamat al-sa'ah that they will be kasr al khutaba those who want to talk, there will be too many. But al-fuqaha, those who understand what they talk, are too few. See? So, it, it is very important, my beloved ones, that whatever is happening there, do not take a hadith and apply it on it and that's it. This is very, very dangerous. And I tried to follow the versions of more than one share. Those, whatever you want to say them, but following Quran and Sunnah is what I would say. And the way they explain and, and things. Yes, there are those who apply here and there, but it does not look like that always. We say these are all leading to that. Yes, definitely. Now, let us go to the end of the time to few things. But before that, I will try to give something which is going to be a key to so many things which is going to happen. Now, the very first and the obvious which will happen and will leave no room for doubt is the Zuhur al-Mahdi al-Muntadhar. The Mahdi al-Muntadhar which is definitely going to come. As I said, his name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, ending up to Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? The great, 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 whatever, grandson of the fifth Khalifa, Hassan ibn Ali, who stepped down from it for Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So the fifth Khalifa was Hassan ibn Ali for six months who used to be in Kufa, Iraq, and Muawiyah, who was already the governor for Ali in Shah. He was given the place there, and he was given this side, and then he decided to step down instead of any misunderstanding and conflict. Rasulullah he said that this Ibn of mine, this son, Allah will yuslih bayna fi atayni azimatayn, will consile between two great uh, groups and that happened to be what it was. So it is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him inshallah that Mahdi al-Muntadhar who will become the Khalifa and rule would be from his own children. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Now when this Mahdi will come and the bay'ah will be given to him there will be no room for doubts after when the true one will come. Only after will Masih al-Dajjal come. Now, appearance of Masih al-Dajjal will also leave no room for any doubt that he is Masih al-Dajjal. Since then, till today, there is. Was he, was, is he that Ibn Sayyad? Or is he the one? Definitely is the one who was in that island where Tamindari saw him. But was he created before that or will he be created when the time comes? All this will be later on. Wallahu alam But when he comes, those things are minor issues. What it is important for us to be protected. He will start, for example, claiming that he is the God. Rasulullah sallam he said, you will not be able to see your, your God, your Creator, Allah, before your Qiyam. So that's easy for us. Innahu awar, he has got a defect in a, in a rabbakum laysa bi awar, and Allah has, doesn't have that kind of defect. So this is enough for us. Then he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, guided us to few things, including Surah Al-Kahf, recitation and memorization of at least first ten ayah of it in the beginning will protect you from Masih al-Dajjal. Other riwayats indicate to the end part of Surah Al-Kahf. In reciting it, Yom al-Jum'ah, on Jum'ah, Yom al-Jum'ah starts from Thursday evening and finishes by sunset on Friday afternoon. That is Yom al-Jum'ah. To recite it on that day, if not then at least the first ten verse of it, to be protected. That is the day when it will come, don't dare and say, I'm going to test him, I will know who he is. Maktubun bayna aynay kafara, it's written there, kafir yaqrawuhu kullu mu'min, every believer will be able to know. Only believers will be able to know, that it's written there. So when Mahdi will come, it will become clear. In his time will come Masih al-Dajjal. While Mahdi and his soldiers have battled, 
in a place which is more like a borderline of current Syria with Turkey. That is where the battle will be. And massive battles and part of that battle also is that uh, when they will take the support, combination support of a room, Room of the time in the lifetime of Rasulullah were the Romans and that's basically good part of chunky part of that we refer to as Europe presently. And then the ulama they give the Sharh anything behind it which includes America becomes part of the Rome for us today. So in that allied forces of theirs helping us to overcome the enemies of us the Muslims then in the end when the battle will be sorted out and it will finish by the wind which will come to the Muslims then one of those Christians will go and put up the flag of the cross and say that this is true this we won the battle a Muslim will go and kill him from there they will come asking for this guy that bring him we want to take the revenge, which will not happen. They will say, we are not going to surrender him. We are not going to surrender him. And the battle will take place. And the amount of soldiers, Rasulullah he said, يَأَتُونَ تَحْتَ ثَمَنُونَ رَايَ Under 80 flags. What does this 80 flag mean? Today one flag is representative of one country. So is it 80 countries, 80 groups? Wallahu alam. If under every group are 12,000, that's 960,000 soldiers, they will come to battle against the Mujahideen. And from that one third will run away, of whom Rasulullah said, Allah will never forgive them. One, day, one third will die as martyrs in that battle, and the victory will be granted to <coughs> one third. <coughs> they will keep on doing jihad till they will come almost to the door of the Roman, Romans which was almost to be conquered in the Khilaf al Uthmaniyyah. But due to, from our so-called Muslims, who were not Muslims and who have been proving that in, in Iran, in Syria today, because of that they could not continue their battle, they had to retreat back to save their own behind. That's a few hundred years ago. SubhanAllah. And it's repeating again and again and again. So because of that, we see they will be there and at that time it will be called Inna al-Masih al-Dajjal kad khalafakum fi ahlikum That Masih al-Dajjal has taken over your families and then uh, Mahdi will send the soldiers to go and check out The hadith, this hadith, particular hadith is a Sahih Muslim Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said I know their horses, the color of it and their names Those who will go You heard me right did the Sunnah say Ferraris, Datsuns, M16? What did he say? Horses. He used the word which is in Sahih Muslim, Khayl, not Dabba. Dabba anything which walks and moves on the, on the earth. So it could be explained as cars, but not when it is Khayl. Khayl is a Khayl, khalas. It cannot be a car. Right? So where would this, all these modern technologies be at that time? Where will the petrol be? Where will so much of these things be? That's another question to be answered. So they will come to check whether really Masih al-Dajjal is appeared or not. And they will come to check. And there it looks like that their markers, their station will be sharp. More precisely in Damascus and other places around it. And we know that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will descend down in Damascus in the Manara Sharqi al Baydwa, in the eastern white minaret and it was built after in the time of al Umawiyin and that one still stands and if there is any place where scholars have said he would come down of which we know it is that place and currently it is mostly recited by Christians Ajeeb Allah and now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when being asked in that time of trials and tribulations he always guided all those who would be living at that time to go to Sham 
to go to Sham, to go to Sham, to go to Sham, not Medina and Makkah. Medina will be in a position and state at that time, that is after that it will happen, that it will become kharab. No residents will be living there in spite of half million plus permanent residents in Medina, sky ro rocket buildings, universities, hundreds and thousands of visitors day in and day out. Animals will be going inside the masajid that time. Subhanal Khaliq al Azim. And this is when Masih al Dajjal will come. It, th this part of Medina, which I mentioned right now, will happen after Masih al Dajjal. Because Masih al Dajjal, let us go back to Mahdi. Mahdi will be there, and when he hears, he sends those horses, and then when he comes, he will know at that time he wasn't there, and now he is. And they will retract back because of the internal issues here. So Masih al Dajjal will come. He is 40 days, which is another explanation. At that time, in the end, will come Isa alayhi salatu salam, descend down in Damascus. From there, he will end up going to Babul Lut, which is in Philistine, and there, that is where he will kill Masih al Dajjal. And then the issue of Yajuj wa Majuj. Those human beings, how many in numbers, where exactly they are, is also another issue which has never been sorted out yet. And the place which was uh, sealed by Dhul Qarnain in Surah Al Kahf, we know the story. More authentically, it looks like Wallahu Alam somewhere in eastern uh, reg uh, uh, region of uh, Russia, uh, 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 that's uh, Tajikistan and other places. When Harun al Rashid he sent an expedition behind those, he did send those expedition there and most of them they died because of the harsh weather, only few managed to come back. Now that is where it looks like. How many they are? Where are they living? Satellites do you think may not have tried it? They may have tried it, but it is only when Allah wants they would start to appear. They will generate fast, they will grow very fast in the sense multiply numbers. There will be so many that they will finish drinking the entire water of the river. Nothing will be there. Those who will come later, they won't have anything to drink. <laughs> Isa alayhi salatu salam has descended. He has killed Masih and Dajjal. Now the next episode will be of this Ya'juj wa Majuj, Ya'gog and Magog. And from the mountain of Philistine, Isa alayhi salatu salam and his followers, he will make the dua, oh Allah, we, have got, we can't do anything about them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send those animals which will come and destroy them and, and they will die all and then they will be taken and thrown wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them, carried by the birds. And then after that the land will flourish, the narrations indicate whether uh, Isa will be for seven years and some they say three years, some they say some more years. He will stay here, live here, and die here, uh, alayhi salatu wasalam. And at that time, of course, we have Mahdi al Islam. He will be gone, the land will flourish, and everything will come back. The Iman will strengthen and will be of a level, and people will be given, uh, distributed the wealth um, just like that. And, uh, you know, and so much it will happen, and, and then people will become so rich that there will be nobody to take zakah. And this is the peaks of everything and then after they die then it starts to go down and where other ayats will come um, and the very uh, such as the dabba the animal which will come and write a mu'min mu'min kafir kafir and then the fire which will come out of Adan and that is in Yemen tahshirun nas ila ardil mahshar which will drive the people to the land where Qiyamah will be, and that is also Sham. Yabitu min haistu batu. The fire will stay and look at them. When they are resting, they can't move anymore, the fire will wait. Next day when it comes, it will drive them towards that place. And then of course we have the rising of the sun from the west when the door of the Toba will be closed. That is another thing they explained. Is it going to be closed permanently or is it at that time? As I said, I don't want to go too much in the depth of all those things also. Let us come back again.
where we had uh, oh, okay just one thing I had promised so I will say now Medina and Mecca the the Masih and Dajjal will not be able to enter will not be able to enter so Medina is still there will be residents um, the hadith indicates as far as I recall 60,000 will go as Munafiqeen out of Medina and follow Masih Dajjal who would be camped in Al Juf. Now, say for example, visualize it with me. Now, say this is uh, this is uh, okay. I'll make it here. Though. It's easier. Now, this is Masjid Nabawi. This is Qibla. This is where Ohad is at the back. The Khandak is here. Now, if you go further towards this Masjid, uh, the mountains of Ohad, from this region, from this part. Coming towards this is Kandak side, further from Kandak, this is Masjid Qiblatain, a little bit further behind it, from there to the mountain where you have seen the palace, the king's palace, and then after that, towards Masjid Nawi comes the Islamic University. Now, that valley towards Mount Ohad is what is considered as Jurf even currently. Remember Usama ibn Zayd ibn al Haritha, who was just about 18 years old. While under him were the likes of Abu Bakr, Umar and others, Rasulullah was sending him to fight the Romans. The commander was Usama ibn Zayd ibn Haritha, 18 years old. For us, our 18 years old children are still considered where you are happily, happily volunteering to change their nappies. Uh, hopefully you understand what I am saying. And here he was the commander of the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the last commander. At his death was a young man of 18 years old. Right? When, remember when Rasulullah was very sick and about to die, they were camped in Juruf. This is the Juruf, a wide region. So that is where, not exactly, it doesn't have to be exactly where Osama was, it's a wide range of place, kilometers, where will be Masih Dajjal. From there he won't be able to enter inside Medina. But the people will go out to him and we have the story in Sahih Muslim of that young man who will try to find out and he will kill him once and then he will put him back together and he will try to do it again and he won't be able to. It is, it is, it happens there in Jerusalem. Now, brothers, let us come back to what is happening in Sham. The message is already clear from my introduction the, that where we stand from it. Not only for Sham, for other places. First of all, do not rush to give any verdict to any particular groups or individuals. Unless you have facts and figures in front of you and that is not YouTube. <coughs> it is not YouTube. That is the only information you have. Even if you see a person dead full of blood, you are not exactly sure who killed them and why. Yes, that's a dead person. Who killed them? You don't know. Why killed? You don't know. You can only see coming that coming in YouTube. You don't even know who sent it there. When so many things easily, which is harming certain few million people in the world, can be taken away so quickly from the site, why are not those things taken away? Why don't you think of it in that way? Why is it still there? So many easy things, simple things are taken away and that still leaves there. So you have to think about that. Do not go and think, okay, one sheikh is given this fatwa, another is given, I, I feel that this is it. It's not as easy as that, as that process. Jihad is going everywhere, coming around. Nobody denies that. But where is that group and whom to support? is a very tricky issue. We have to be very, very careful about that. Now, we can only relate what the Mashaik have said. Even the great Mashaik of the time who are very well versed in current affairs, when certain questions are asked, they said, this is the way I feel, but this is what has been told to me, and I know from the news, as you know, I'm not clear of it, what exactly it is. So many things can be twisted, and we are not aware of it. So, it's not only for Syria, but for Syria, but for other places. Now, for Syria, we can make dua for them. Raise our hands. 
nobody is telling you to do what the local government in which country you live is not allowing you to do there are so many things you can do within the legal teeth within the limits of the place and you have not been able to do and you only want to do what you, you they do not permit you to do why it is coming from the shaitan ya akhi i only want that is because that is attractive to you shaitan is beautifying it to you as an action itself as an action may be okay but for you individually it may not be okay exactly like one person for him to get married to one is not okay maybe islamically it may not be even good for him to be only with one it may be he should get married to four whereas for so many of us it should be only one so if a four is allowed it does not apply on everyone so if there is something happening say, everywhere not it is suitable for everyone Why is it that you only want to do what is not allowed for you? Reprimanding your child islamically we all know how much you are allowed. But why do you want to reprimand your child in a country in a place where it will be uh, you will be outlawed when there are so many other ways you can reprimand your child and teach him what is right and the law of that country will always support you in that. Why do you want to reprimand your wife in a way which is illegal in the country while you know islamically it is not whereas there are so many other ways in which you can correct your wife which is acceptable in the law of the land why when somebody asks me are you allowed to beat your wife in islam i said look first you need to understand the verse then secondly how the sahaba has applied it thirdly does it mean that quran is saying you have to do it that is the last of the resolutions you chose to live in a land which does not allow so why you want to do something which it does not allow when islam is not mandating on you to do it anyway so that's this is where we start to fail isn't it and then so many brothers they go astray they think i have to do this whereas he may it's better for him not to do it so brothers next time when especially when current affairs comes we be very very careful in first of all before looking at others look at yourself look at okay what can you do how much of benefit is it going to bring for you how much you will be asked yawm al qiyamah kullukum mas'ulun wa kullukum mas'ulun ar ra'iyati each one of you are responsible and you are shepherds over your flocks then he sallallahu alaihi wasallam started who your flocks are did they say somebody who is 10000 kilometers away 20000 i'm not demeaning any support for them no but what are those supports which you have to give is also important for us to know especially when you are you know you are totally lost what is happening what to do and what not to do yes all of these what is happening there all are from the science of karma nobody denies that but how many of these hadith applies directly exactly word by word for that particular uh, issue i think what i gave as an example of masih ad-dajjal should be enough and so many other one current example of year 1400 that's 35 years 36 years ago and one in the from the lifetime of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam should be enough for us to understand that we do not put one hadith and apply it it applies to fulan and to such a situation whereas when you get uh, another leave another 20 years So, and then the total situation changes in those places or the political situation changes something else happens in your say subhanallah how wrong i was so don't apply it so quickly as many brothers they go like they take this numerical miracles they say especially when they go to the issue of like number 19 uh, when khalifa rashid uh, who was uh, originally an egyptian he died uh, he was shot dead in america and he started to use this number 19 to claim so many things about the Quran and then he ended up decreasing on some of the verses increasing some of the things including almost claiming prophecy for himself Allahu musta'an wa alayhi tuklan amin now like them like him many got uh, uh, carried away by him and they thought what he is saying is correct including ahmad didat rahimahullah and then he realized what he is saying is wrong and then it was verified there is a very good, good book um, uh, the hoax about the numerical miracle by uh, dr bilal phillips hafizahullah try to read it you will get good information in that uh, i don't know whether it is published or not but you will find pdfs uh, of that in the internet bi idnillah ta'ala 
Now, then the people, once the September 11 happened, now they started to put the vessels in Surah to Toba and try to apply to that. Look, 911, the, the chapter is number 9, the verse number is this. And then they try to bring some verse from here and say, Look, Allah has mentioned about it. And when challenged, they were proven wrong because they did not apply it properly. They say it is in the year, uh, what was the year? 2000, right? 2001. Was it 2001 or 2000? 2001. I even forget that. Subhanallah. So they applied in that numbers also that look, it is in the year 2001 and this is the ayah, the ayah that it out. Wallahi, they are masakin, they don't, don't know that the ears in the eyes of Allah is only lunar system based on the moon. There is no sun system of ears in Islam at all. It's not acceptable at all. That was created by Jews to uh, divert people from the truth, such as the tent of Muharram, which refers to the uh, victory given to Musa والسلام, from Fir'aun. And they changed it so that people they can get lost. And that's why when Rasulullah came, uh, one of the narrations indicated that they were fasting in Rabi'ul Awal because they had changed the date and only the Ahbar, their scholars, they used to know what is the true date. date. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَلَبِسَ فِي كَحْفِهِمْ سَلَسَمِيَةَ تَسِنِينَ وَزْدَادُ تِسْعَى That they lived in their, uh, they slept in their cave for 309 years. Some of these scholars, they say 300 is based on the lunar system, uh, solar system. That's the sun, which is 10, never days bigger each year than, um, than the lunar, based on the moon. Then Allah said, وَزْدَادُ تِسْعَى And they slept more 9 years. So based on sun, it is 300, based on moon, uh, it is 309. This explanation is also wrong. Because, Alhamdulillah, Allazi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. So it comes with alif and alif and alif. So if Allah had said, Salasami wa tis'a sinin, it would, would not come with alif. So Allah said, Wazdadu tis'a. 300 years and ziyada of 9 years. Which refers to 300 of moon calendar, uh, or you can say Hijra calendar, or Islamic calendar, which we refer to. So now people, they don't even know the facts, and they start to take a twist, and then apply it to everything. These are just examples I'm trying to tell from multiple different backgrounds, just to let you know. Please, brothers, don't apply what is happening in current affairs, everything to an ayah or a hadith. If it may be, it may not be. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Jibreel brothers, when is Yom al He didn't know. He said, You don't know, I don't know. As much as you don't know, yet Jibreel, I also don't know. The only one known knows it is Allah. The trumpet to be blown is ready, and he has been waiting, not even flicking his eyes, that angel, waiting for the command from Allah. He has no idea when it is going to be. If we had a little bit of idea, it would have been easy, isn't it? But that is not the case. So that always we are ready. If you know that tomorrow you are going to die, you would not even be listening to my lecture, but you will be in sujood. But Allah hid it from you. So that you are always on the edge. If you knew that you will be living for 70 years, for 69 years, 355 days or 345 days, you would be in the pub. Then on the last day in Salatul Fajr, you are in the masjid. Tawbah, you know, after Fajr you are going to die. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has made it easy. It's not like that. That's why you don't know. So you think that more important than your death is Yawm Al-Qiyamah, which includes every creation of Allah, not you only as an individual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hidden it. It's so easy for me and you to come out with a result just because of few events or more than few events happening here and there. No. So next time, whenever anything happens, I'm not taking anything which is happening there lightly. No, it is not to be taken lightly, but do not apply the ahadith in any individual case, because possibly you may be proven later on that you are, uh, you are wrong, and we know that this is not acceptable. Jazakumullah khairan brothers um, for listening and for being with me. I normally don't like to talk for too long, but I was given a certain amount of time to finish within it. So I wanted to take the opportunity also to, to, to drag on till then. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, can I conclude it? Or?
Okay. And I pray to Allah that may Allah bless you all and may Allah give us hikmah and sincerity in doing whatever we do and uh, never to give anything more than what it uh, deserves. The most of the time from you is rightfully belonging to Quran and not to current affairs. Please only go to one or two articles if you really have to and find out about the news which can come in five minutes and then the rest of the time please read to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala read the Quran <coughs> and the translation and memorize it Wallahi the more you debate, devote your time here the more wiser you will become the more happier you will grow in the better understanding you will have of whatever is around you for the very reason for which you want to go to current affairs the answers are in the Quran and the Sunnah and it is for your own Iman also at the same time which I said in the beginning I would like to conclude with that even say for example if you know you have been spending one to two hours or three to four or five hours a week all on all of these current affairs which mountain did you blow up? Which person did you save? How many political issues have you solved? How many of the current, in the current affairs, what kind of influence you have been able to give? After reading so many messages, how many millions of dollars which you made you have been able to send it to them? Whereas, if you had spent the time reading Quran, raising your hands and asking Allah for them, the difference could have been far more. Wallahu a'lam wa biswa. وعليه التقلان وجزاكم الله خيرا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم انصر المجاهدين الذين يجاهدون في سبيلك لإعلاء كلمتك يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم انقذ المسجد الأقصى من براثين اليهود الغاشمين اللهم ارزقنا الصلاة فيه قبل الممات برحمتك يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذبياتنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتقين إمام سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته